Good afternoon, Dr. Deshpande, and thank you so much for taking out the time today to talk to us at the Persistent Office in Pune on a beautiful afternoon. Uh, very exciting to talk to you as a partner with Call for Code and get your views on how persistence engagement has been with regards to Call for Code. As a quick introduction, my name is Somitra Lamai. I've been with IBM for 16 plus years now through a variety of roles spanning from product engineering, professional services, product support, etc. And today, very excitedly being a part of the ecosystem engineering organization, working very closely with partners such as Persistent in order to build the ecosystem together so that there is a win-win-win across clients, partners and IBM. Dr. Anand Deshpande needs very little introduction. Uh, he's the founder, chairman and managing director of Persistent Systems since inception and is responsible for the overall leadership of the company. Dr. Deshpande holds a Bachelor of Technology with honors in computer science and engineering from the Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur and an MS and PhD in computer science from Indiana University, Bloomington, Indiana, USA. He has been recognized by both his alma maters as a distinguished alumnus in 2012 by IIT Kharagpur and by the School of Informatics of Indiana University with a Career Achievement Award in 2007. Dr. Deshpande is a true technologist and a visionary and has been the driving force in growing persistent systems from its inception in 1990 to the publicly traded global company of today. He is a founding trustee of Persistent Foundation and has served numerous positions at various professional and non-profit organizations. After transitioning from the role of the CEO at Persistent, Dr. Deshpande is committed to making a broader impact and, and is focused on data, higher education and entrepreneurship. Call for Code needs very little introduction. It's a joint initiative by David Clark Cause, the United Nations Human Rights Office, and IBM as a founding member. In the fifth year of Call for Code, it actually is the largest tech for good initiative globally of a kind to create solutions that help some of the most pressing societal and humanitarian issues of our time. Call for Code has over 500,000 developers, data scientists, and problem solvers over across 180 nations contributing and creating more than 20,000 applications and solutions for humanitarian issues. This year's global challenge is focused on the theme of sustainability and opened on April 26th and it closes on 31st October. Global challenge prize pool, which is a normal every year, has been extended this year to also introduce accelerators, which are essentially two week competitions designed to help teams fast track their projects and become eligible for additional prizes. I'm sure that's going to be a motivation for many folks out there. So Dr. Anand, uh, first question for you. I know Persistent has had a long partnership with IBM. Can you talk a little bit about the relationship and how it has evolved over the years? Thank you, Somitra, for inviting me here. And it's a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, IBM and Persistent have had a very long relationship, more than two decades. And over these years, we have done many interesting things. IBM continues to be our largest customer. And uh, we have a large number of people working in the IBM ecosystem using IBM technologies for many customers beyond what we work for IBM alone. In the context of how IBM and Persistent work together, we are very delighted that IBM focuses on things beyond just work and computing, and is looking at global issues. And uh, we look at IBM as our North Star and Bellwether for how we should look at our social impact and other things that we do as Persistent Foundation. I also like working with IBM partly because of the respect they have for vendors and partners and individuals who work at IBM. And IBM is clearly one of our most important customers. And uh, we hope we can continue to work with IBM in years to come as well. Thank you, Dr. Deshpande. How have you seen Call for Code evolve over the years and persistence involvement with Call for Code right from 2018, in fact? Yes, uh, Call for Code, I remember uh, very early on, Onkar Nimbarkar, who used to be in Pune. Yes. He actually went back to the US and was running this ecosystem project and he first uh, shared this idea with me. It seemed like a brilliant way for IBM, which has access to the global leaders, 
including United Nations and others who were able to bring those rich problems and access to those rich problems to coders who tend to work in their own cubicle and do their own things. But bringing it all together on an IBM platform made a whole lot of sense. And we are delighted to have been part of the early years of the code, call for code from 2018. Uh, in the beginning, we weren't sure where this might be, but as we saw the results at the end of the year, we were convinced that this is a program that needs to go on forever. And the impact that we have seen that call for code has made has been quite amazing. From persistent point of view, we find that when we advertise for call for code, we get a lot of enthusiastic engineers who are interested in trying out new solutions and problems. And I'm really hoping this year as well, persistent teams not only participate, but are in the last final stages as well. So I'm hoping that we can create some energy out of this. And some of the uh, problems that you have stated are really wonderful. And I hope, and I'm very confident they'll change the world as we go along. Thank you so much, Dr. Deshpande. Uh, so one of the questions we get asked very often is, who can participate in Call for Code? And it's really simple. The answer is everyone. Yes. So essentially, we have students and over 50% are university uh, students itself. We have developers, we have entrepreneurs, we have a lot of humanitarians, problem solvers, NGOs who are part of it. And the criteria for judging is really very simple. There are four things. The first is completeness and transferability. The second is effectiveness and efficiency. Third, we talk about design and usability. And fourth is obviously creativity and innovation. So it's really meant for everyone and the call for action over here via Call for Code is for everyone to be a part of uh, this, this particular Call for Code program. So moving, moving to the next question, Dr. Deshpande, what, what in your mind are the benefits for persistent employees to participate in Call for Code? Actually, there are many benefits for employees and uh, community at large to participate. And I can enumerate a long list, but very simplistically, what happens is engineers who work on projects tend to be very inward focused. They are working on a specific project at a time. This gives them an opportunity to be creative and think about the broader ecosystem, study sustainability or other global challenges. Think about what might be solving those problems. So the opportunity to look broader and look at bigger problems is one first thing that I would say is very interesting. Second is that when you do a project like this, you get an opportunity to bring in different parts of the technology stack together. When you are working on a project, you have a very narrow view of what you might be doing. Here you are looking at an audience that might consume the product, which would be very different from mm. the kind of people who might work on your particular product that you may be working on. So this gives an opportunity to think outside the box, think of new ways of solving the problem and gives you exposure to the entire tech stack end to end rather than just one piece of it. So this is again, very useful to learn on, an, on the job, learn new things in terms of all of these kinds of things. The other thing I find is that when you put community in front to solve these kinds of problems, it creates a sense of empathy and understanding of why you are building these kinds of solutions. So that is very valuable. and. I find that to be very motivating for engineers at large. And that's another benefit. One other thing that I find is that you mentioned this, that you get a chance to work as a community. You bring in students, you bring in entrepreneurs. So we in the company also work with a lot of students and others. So I think this would be a good opportunity for persistent employees to look beyond their project and their team and bring the local community into the game, bring the best experts who might be working on sustainability. And we do a lot of things with persistent foundation in these areas. So if you bring them all together, that could be a good opportunity for employees to think beyond what they are doing. And of course, if you win, you get flame and you are the, the hero and we would love to see that happen as well. So of course there's a prize and the winners and all that. Yes. But even if you didn't win, right, the act of participating in itself is quite exciting. And I would uh, go out and encourage all employees to participate and not only participate themselves, but bring their friends along in the game. That's, that's awesome. Thank you so much. So you actually created a segue into the next question. While walking into your office uh, today, we saw a lot of focus on sustainability itself. Yes. And this year's theme for Call for Code is sustainability. So what, you know, per you is persistent from a sustainability focus? What, what are, what is persistent doing from a focus on sustainability overall? Yes. So we have actually many initiatives on sustainability and we have had them for many years now. Uh, for example, we have done uh, uh, solar panels on all our buildings. We also did solar for the Nampalli 
railway station and for Pune railway station. Oh, so we've looked at yeah. some of these other places where solar can be used. We've been planting trees across multiple plots. Last year itself, we planted more than 50,000 trees in oh, the Kokan oh. area. So sustainability from the climate change has been an important part. What we have also done this year is that as ESG, as it's being called now, is starting to become prominent. And sustainability now becomes part of this whole uh, ESG type initiatives that we are looking at. And we have now broadened the scope. We have also gotten our board committees to look at ESG. So the stakeholders committee that we had, we have extended the definition of stakeholders from not just being shareholders, but being everyone else. And then extended our stakeholders committee to include ESG as part of it. We have also created an office of ESG in the company and we have included other people who would be part of that. So we are looking at ESG as such as holistically, looking at how to make an impact, not just in terms of the environmental and sustainability parts, but also looking at various things. Now you are in this office in Bhagirath right now. This building we have completely revamped and we have thought a lot about uh, sustainability engineering, furniture that got in or the kinds of technology that has gone in here. And this is an important aspect for us. And I see this not just as a uh, as a window dressing or you know sort of Sorry. lipstick on the pig as yeah. they call it, but we see this as a great opportunity and responsibility. We believe that it is everyone's responsibility to deal with climate change and sustainability issues. And when a company does such things, it brings the employees into the game. Everyone feels like this is important. They take it to their home, their families, and their community, and it has a good impact. So uh, I'm really uh, very much committed to. Persistent doing this, but I believe that with this uh, partnership with IBM, we'll get a nice opportunity to bring sustainability to center stage yes. and have uh, the coders think beyond just what we do as foundation, but do many other things as well. Absolutely. So well said. Uh, another interesting aspect is the work you do with Persistent Foundation and the work the foundation does. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yes. Um, so we started foundation uh, as, so we've been doing 1% corporate CSR from 95 onwards. We were a very small company and we, we all believed that, you know, we are part of the community and we should contribute to the welfare of the community. So a lot of those things started out early in 95. In uh, 2008, nine, we started our own foundation called it Persistent Foundation, where we focus right now on three, dif three dif specific areas. One is health and healthcare. Second related thing is on education and third is around community development. And a lot of focus is on uh, women and the uh, the sort of the disadvantaged people in some form or the other. So education for the disadvantaged or women or ladies or girls or things on the healthcare side along those areas as well. Uh, so we have a very active foundation who does some of these things. One important aspect that I want to mention in the context of the Persistent Foundation is that, see, we see this as corporate CSR money, the 2% that we are contributing from the company. It is coming from the hard work of the employees. Yes. And we want the employees also to be part of this mission. So a lot of our activities include involving employees as volunteers in a lot of the activities that we do and bringing them together as we look at our mission on Persistent Foundation. So Persistent Foundation is of the employees, meaning of their contribution of employees, by the employees in the right. sense that they also right. contribute in this, but it is not for employees. Not for employees. Yeah. No, I mean, it is it's for everyone else. True. And, and that sense of community building, I think, is critical for the success of any activity that we do from a Persistent Foundation perspective. So thank you so much. Uh, to close out and before we close out, just one quick question in my mind. So Call for Code is essentially a hackathon on steroids uh, in yes. some way. Uh, you in your you know extensive experience have conducted a lot of hackathons in the past. What do you think uh, is the difference within Persistent uh, and its employees that hackathons create overall? See, hackathons are actually many things in some ways. But uh, one uh, objective that you have in a short duration hackathon is to get some energy to happen and convince employees that a lot can be done in 24 hours if you kind of put your mind to it and yes. kind of put yourself to think about different kinds of things. And it also brings different people together and you get that energy to happen. Usually what happens is that whatever you do during these hackathons doesn't always have a very sustainable long-term future by and large. So a lot of people try these ideas out, but 
after the hackathon maybe you know these activities kind of wane out so what i find that you are doing this year and you've been doing in other places is to get these ideas to bring the ideas together but then after these ideas have been uh, sort of a little bit pruned out and focused in some sense then trying to find a way to make them a little bit more sustainable and really something that can be deployed in the community and that's very exciting that i found actually i must say a couple of things in this context that may be interesting as well so one thing i found one of our customers they have a business, have a development model where they do this every month so they have something called uh, swarm and uh, some they have another name for it okay. so every month on the middle of the month they, they have a hackathon come together so they uh, say okay this month's problem is this one so everybody kind of works towards it keeps the infrastructure ready and then they work a solid four days Got and it. just try to it. close it out yes. and then for the next two three day, weeks they will make sure that it's stable and it's deployed into the code right. so this is another way of how things have started to happen i'll tell you what my personal ambition on this stuff is that i really believe you know that uh, so i'm a big fan of the cooking shows you know things like uh, master chef and all these other things and what i found is that master chef and those kinds of shows have made cooking a spectator sport yes okay very true one of my ambitions and dreams even say is to make programming a spectator sport oh. and i find that these kinds of hackathons have that opportunity right. if you do this right to make uh, you know make programming not something that is isolated and done by some individual geek sitting in some corner of the office but it is this whole thing that you know coding and programming is a fun thing to do everybody can do it and in a way everybody is becoming right. a coder considering the way technology is moving so we need to make coding very accessible and i think these kinds of programs have the opportunity of making coding a spectator sport so that's one of my long term missions or i wouldn't say mission but it's a dream in a way i hope no, one of these days we'll figure it out that's that's but awesome that's something i want to do one of these days that's that's very exciting because call for code attempts to get there and i think through this partnership uh, sooner than later we will get there so let's have a cooking coding show coding show right which yeah, is a spectator show yeah i mean it should be something in comes into your living room just like we all sit as a family and watch <laughs> some true <people> cook true <laughs> and yeah. it's become a, a spectator sport in a way right and i love those cake shows the last most not so much that you know, so you have the on tlc and other yes. channels where you get three teams and they they are asked to build some audacious cake and uh, the the story of how that happens is very very enriching right enriching. so absolutely wouldn't it be fun to have something like that where somebody says you know i used hash tables <laughs> that something that's <laughs> be so cool right Uh, so I'm I'm really uh, looking to see how to make that happen. We replace hash browns with hash tables. Yes. <laughs> All right. So on that note, any closing statements from your side, Dr. Deshpande? No, I'm I'm delighted to be part of this. Thank you for um, you know coming to Pune, visiting us today, and uh, for the partnership we have with IBM. I'm really grateful for this opportunity, and I hope uh, we continue to sustain this partnership as we go along. And to all the coders all across the world. Um, and including at persistent uh, let's go change the world through this kind of stuff it's not, it's not just about what you do for the project but this is an opportunity to make a difference and uh, take every opportunity to make that happen thank you dr deshpande couldn't have been a better closing statement than that thank you so much thank you thank you